Hey, what's up? My name is Ash. Uh, I am a performance artist from Brooklyn, New York. And I have known Michael for about the past 10 years. Uh, we met in 2009 working at the Sunflower Market together. And, uh, you know, one of the main things that we connected on was what it was to be like artists. Um, he did music, I did performance art, uh, like theater and stuff. And I think the one thing that um, like connected us the most is the fact that we took what we were doing seriously. I mean, we were in our early 20s, we were young, and we were like, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to, like, I'm gonna be an artist, you know, I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna do great things and <clears throat> whatever. And you know, it was that determination that I loved. Like, we would just go, like, we'd go grab a bottle of wine and go over to, uh, you know, grab all the wine, oh, and like Gouda cheese and stuff, and like go sit out in like random outdoor spaces in Rio Rancho or Albuquerque and just like, you know, listen to music and like talk, talk about art and all of that. I think that it's that determination that Michael has that makes him a real artist. I think, I mean, he, he's an amazing guitar player, uh, absolutely, but I think any real artist needs something more than just, just being good at their craft. They have to have discipline, they have to have determination, they need to have passion in their craft and Michael hands down has always had that he's he's a person that I think is going to do great things and I mean with by tour now already like the music he's put out it's, it's amazing so I'm really excited to see what you do next and I have followed you the whole way and will continue to follow you so my band these uncools and flicker and they don't exist anymore it was heartbreaking for me What, what's kind of the uh, the origin of Bytor? Where where does that actually come from? It's an ambitious project uh, that you've been working on on the uh, documentaries. Keep the faith in your goals. Keep the faith in your dreams. Here's Grandpa. I'm, yeah. make, I'm making a test film okay. for the computer so I can You want me to go over there? Oh no, this is good. Well, you, you can go over there and check it out if you want. Okay, well. But I'm just making a test. Test. Just to get practice. Testing. Testing. Testing one, two. <laughs> I love my grandfather so much. He has been beyond encouraging towards me in this crazy dream. He has helped me out a lot, and I feel so blessed to have such an amazing grandfather like him on my side. This is my boy Sirius. I've had him for over six years. He was with me throughout the whole journey in Seattle. This dog means more to me than a lot of things, actually. And he's, he's been there when I'm first writing songs. He's always been the first, well, creature to listen to my songs. I was gonna say person. He might as well be a person to me. But I love him more than anything. He's always gonna be there with me. And he is a little rock star. So this is Sirius. Sirius, say hi. Yeah, it's a good boy. Well, at the beginning of 2018, one of the first things we did is had a band meeting. We wanted the game plan and discuss everything that we wanted to do for the year. We wanted to finish recording Between the Tides as fast as we could and then get into the next EP. We also wanted to plan a tour for the summer. We wanted to make more music videos. And I just had a great meeting with Gateway 
and they're really supportive of all the ideas that we had and were willing to fund all of the sweet things that I wanted to do with the band. And so, I mean, everything was looking great, and I was just super excited for 2018, and I knew that we had a solid game plan. Unfortunately, when everything seemed to be going pretty well, I did notice that there's something going on with Corey. I mean, there was a few rehearsals and also just studio sessions that he was calling off a little bit more than usual. And it, it did get to the point where I was getting really concerned, but I just didn't know what was going on. And so, one day he called a meeting at the studio and as soon as we got there and just got into the control booth he pretty much broke it to us that he was done with the band and he couldn't continue on and right then and there just quit hey that's pretty wicked actually yeah, look at that. Well, yeah, once Corey said the words that he was quitting and just couldn't do anymore, I mean, I immediately just became numb. My heart sank and I, I had flashbacks of all the These Young Fools days and all the many different lineups. I thought about the beginning of Flicker and Fade and really how much I believed in the project. I knew we were good. I knew that, that we could do something great with it. And I just, I, I couldn't believe that I was in this situation once again. I mean, it is, it is so difficult to put in all the time and energy in something that you really believe in. I mean, it takes a lot of time and a lot of hard work just to try to accomplish the goals you're setting out for. And, you know, when it happens once and a guy quits, fine, you just get back up and keep on going. It happens again, keep on going, then again and again. It's like how many times can he really just keep on going and not think, is this just a sign that this is not meant to be? But I didn't, you know, that, that definitely crossed my mind and I didn't want to think that. But I just, I didn't know what to think at that moment. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Should I give it some more time in Seattle? I've been out here for five years. And yes, I experienced a lot of great things with my bands, but really it kept resulting in the same thing. Get to a certain point and then just someone would quit. Or get hurt. I mean, it's it was difficult when when he quit the band. I mean, I understood where he was coming from, and I love Corey. He's a, he's a great guy, but I was I mean I was disappointed because I felt that we had a lot of potential. And I loved working with those guys. I will say that they were the best. Ryan and Corey were the best guys that I worked with out in Seattle, hands down. We had the best chemistry. I got along with them the best. And it, that, was, that was a hard moment. And I just, I mean, I remember we were at Audio Dose and we were in the control room and, I mean, he was just telling me why he was quitting, why this was happening, and I just, I didn't even really know what to say. Just, I couldn't believe that it was happening. I believed so much in Flickr and Fade, I knew that 2018 was gonna be a strong year for us. I knew that we were on the verge of just getting to the next level. And to me, the next level was touring, just getting out there, getting out of the Seattle area and just, you know, spreading our sound amongst the Northwest and the Southwest, make our way all the way to the middle of the country and make our way to 
the East Coast. I mean, that was just the next step for us. I thought that we could start opening up for, you know, bigger bands. But yeah, the, the day that he quit, it was, it was heartbreaking for me. And I had a lot of reflecting and a lot of thinking that I had to do. Well, I decided to move back home to Albuquerque simply because there was just nothing for me in Seattle anymore. I mean, once Corey quit the band, really one of the first things that popped in my mind was I should just move back home. I gave a lot of years out there. I tried my best and there was just no music scene in Seattle, unfortunately, and nothing really groundbreaking was going on out there. And it became really expensive to live and it, it was hard. It was every month, it was just a struggle. And, you know, I, I stayed out there as long as I could because of the bands that I was in. I really believed and I moved out to Seattle for, for a reason, to accomplish a goal. And, you know, after five years and the same thing kept happening, it was just, it was just time for me just to get home. I knew it. I, you know, a couple times, you know, when guys would quit these young fools, I, I would think, should I just go back home? But no, I kept going and kept going. But right when Corey quit, I knew I should just go back home, regroup, be with my family. Cause I, I mean, I missed them a lot. It was hard over the years to be away from them. As I've said, I'm really close to my family and it was, it was hard. And so the best thing was just to move back home. Well, winding on down it's Tuesday April 3rd 2018 I leave in two days oh, I leave Thursday morning so it's times winding on down and pretty I'm pretty sad right now I'm sad because it's an end of an era. I had so much hope coming out here to Seattle. I never thought that moving here would automatically make me a successful musician. I never thought that I would make it out here or I'd be famous. Not that I even really want to be famous. I never thought I'd be a rock star coming out here. But I came out here for a life-changing moment to start a career, and what I chose to do is to become a professional musician. And after five and a half years, it comes down to this moment. There's only now a couple pages that still need to be written, and this chapter comes to a close. I'm excited about the next chapter. I'm really excited to get back home and be with my family. I mean, I'm looking forward to all of that. I'm looking forward to my next project by tour. Well, I've been back home for, for about six months now. And crazy, it's, it really blows my mind and yeah. I do miss Seattle. I miss Seattle a lot. You know, throughout this docu-series so far, I've talked about the ups and downs of the bands, you know, getting to a certain point and something bad would happen. And yes, it was very frustrating. The whole journey was so frustrating. But the good side was I loved living in Seattle. It's such a beautiful city. The Pacific Northwest is just gorgeous. And I love the fact that my apartment was literally eight minutes away from the Puget Sound. Just a gigantic beach, huge body of water. And I, you know, that was the place that I would go all the time, just to get away from everything, because I worked downtown. To get away from the city life, to get away from the frustrations of all the bands, I loved just going to the beach, listening to music, and just bringing my guitar and just writing down there. I mean, it, it was... It was glorious. But being 
back home. It's been good. It's been good being with my family. Getting back into the family life and getting back into the Albuquerque life. It's been good. But yeah, I do. To answer that question, I do miss Seattle. And, you know, making the journey out there, I went out there to pursue a goal, to accomplish a dream. I can't help to think that I failed. But, like I said, the positive thing was it was amazing living in a big city. I, I mean, it's night and day compared to Albuquerque. And I really did meet a lot of good people. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm a Utah girl currently living in Regina, Saskatchewan. I was first introduced to Michael's music with Flicker and Fade when I started following them on Instagram a while ago. And right away I became a fan and have continued to be a fan and follow Michael on his personal account and now with Bytor. And I've been lucky enough to hear all the music on Bytor Music, which is really awesome. And I really think more people need to be able to hear this music and should hear this music. So that's why I'm doing this and going out of my comfort zone because I want him to get his name out there and people to follow him on social media. Check out Bytor Music. Bytor fans, what's up? I'm one of those right here. Yup. I'm Amanda from Youngstown, Ohio. I'm really excited for the new adventure that Vitor is going on. Uh, I love the positivity. I love the hard work that you put in. Um, as a music fan myself, I'm very passionate about music. I love that it brings people together and that it's a, you know it's a passionate thing and it, it uh, takes you to a new place, a new level. Uh, probably takes you out of your mind for a little bit. Get just stress free. You know, I think music is very important, and so I just want to say that I'm very excited for this, again, this new adventure, and I know it's going to be awesome. I speak blessings on it, and I speak peace on whatever adventure, wherever this takes you. I hope it just takes off sky high, because I know you guys rock, and your passion is your music, your fans, you love us, and I know that you're working really hard, and I know that all your hard work is going to pay off. So keep on rocking, guys. You rule, and I uh, can't wait to hear more from you. I, I've been a fan of everything Michael has been involved with uh, ever since. Uh, I, uh, I, I I just like the... Um, uh, the dark theatrical qualities in his riffs, uh, you know, really leaning into that that Rush um, dream theater uh, type of influence, um, while uh, still being incredibly catchy, which is what I really like. You know, riffs that that, that just kind of stick with you and 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 um, um, you know stay with you, and and you can't get it out of your head. And um, uh, that's that's why I'm really so excited about his new project by tour um, because uh, from what I've heard so far it takes what Michael has already built on and uh, really pushes it to the next level in terms of atmospheric rock um, uh, plus he's a He's just a cool dude. I mean, uh, I, I've always enjoyed our interactions and our collaborations together. Um, he's uh, helped out a lot of my shows in the past, and uh, we did a lot of cool things back at KGRG. But um, nothing will ever top. And this is uh, um, this is actually uh, one of my favorite uh, favorite stories uh, when. Um, me and my co-host um, Elijah Big E, uh, we were invited on stage to, uh, and I and I use the the word sing loosely. Uh, um, I guess we'll call it perform uh, to be a uh, part of that performance with uh, with Michael and the band as they played a nice place to visit at a KGRG benefit show. It's um, it's something I'll I'll never forget. It's uh, it's one of my favorite memories. Um, um, and 
I also thought it was uh, really cool that Michael's music, in in a way, uh, bookended my time at KGRG. Uh, being there at the beginning like that, you know, uh, playing one of his songs as you know uh, at the beginning, um, and then when he played during my last show as host of the Monday Project. Um, anyway, I. Uh, um, I wish Michael all the best of luck because if uh, if this is just the beginning, then I can't wait for what Bytor has in store uh, for us next. Uh, my name is Mike Seibert, and until next time, make good choices. So it's my last week here in Seattle. This is my very special, special friend, Dalen. She is actually the first friend I ever made in Seattle. So she's very special to my heart. Pretty much the best friend ever. She is the best friend ever. <laughs> and she's been so supportive of my music, which is just a blessing, and I absolutely love it. You tell me a lot. What? So you taught me a lot. I did? Well, yeah, about like music. And oh, hell yeah. And you I heard it. When you taught me those chords, and then I practically became a rock star. She did practically become a rock star. Dalen. Hello, my name's Salibur, also known as Big E. I'd like to talk about my friend Michael for a second. I had the pleasure of being able to work with him as he was uh, one of the guests on my radio show, The Monday Project. Also, something that was really awesome was that he let me remix one of his songs a while back. Um, it's called The Storm and it definitely, definitely is huge in my heart. Another awesome moment uh, was when he was playing for the KGRG Let's Drive show and he invited me and my co-host, uh, Mike, the other Mike, on stage with him. And it was an insane moment. You could feel the energy, you could feel the magic, and it was great. Um, me, myself, I make music, I make dubstep, and all kinds of other stuff. And so I, um, I have the, the hope and the excitement to be able to work with Michael as he uh, continues his project as Bidor. And I'm telling you guys, listen to his music. He's the real dude. Alright, thank you. What's up, yo? Marty G, my boy Hugo. What's up, ladies? From the Nighty Boys. Doing a big shout out to Michael Geisler, Van Bytor. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you check it out. Music's high paced, melodic, you name it, you can cover it. Dude's amazing at what he does. I've known Michael since elementary school, played football together, high school. I'm up here in Washington now. Where Nighty Boys and Break Room Entertainment came about. Michael moved up here where I got in contact with him again after a while. So make sure you get over, check out By Tour. But while you're doing it, if you want a good laugh, you want some good beats of our own, get over on YouTube and check out Break Room Entertainment. Follow the Nighty Boys. All right, Michael, much love. We're out. Peace. Here he is. It's the man right here. This is Brian. I met him in Seattle. He was my former manager when I worked at Solstice Sunglass Boutique. But more importantly, he's a great friend. <laughs> and I learned a lot from this guy. I mean, we spent years, years in the room at Solstice just thousands, talking music. Thousands of hours. And I learned so much just about gear, just about many different ideas about how to do shows and marketing and that kind of great stuff. So this guy, I really looked up to this guy right here. It's safety safety. <laughs> Hell yeah. Where I got Bytor from is anybody that knows me knows that I'm a huge Rush fan. Rush is my all-time favorite band. I mean, of course, I'm going to say I think they're the greatest, which they are. And they have a song called Bite Torn Snow Dog off their Fly By Night album. And I always thought that Bite Tour would make for a strong band name. And I mean, I just think it's just a cool name anyway. So I always wanted a band to be called Bite Tour. But generally, when it came down to the time to choose band names, 
but the guys I worked with, they obviously didn't have connection to Rush like I did. So I would typically always get outvoted. But now that I can't get outvoted, as soon as Flicker and Fade ended, I knew that I wanted to go forth with Vitor. Well, where I came up with the Skull logo and the story behind it, and actually I got a lot of people that are wondering why I chose to go with the Skull logo, challenging me with, you know it's not really original. I get that, I know. I know the Skull logo is not original, especially when it comes to rock and roll. But the story behind it is right before I moved out to Seattle, one of my good friends now, and at the time I was dating her, her name is Kelsey. One time I came home from work and I saw that she was drawing up these skulls and she asked me if I, what I thought about them. And I, I really liked it. I thought it was really cool. And actually I told her that I think it would make for a good tattoo. And so right then and there, spur of the moment, we went to a tattoo shop and got a tattoo. And it was really cool, and I got it on my wrist right here. She got a matching one as well. And so moving out to Seattle, it just, it just always been a part of me, and it became really special to me because when I would play on stage or rehearsals or anything, you know, I would always would look at it and make me smile, and it just became part of the whole journey for me. And over the years, I knew that I wanted to start using it as my personal logo. And when it came time for me to design custom picks, I knew that I wanted to put that skull on the pick, and I did. And right when Flicker and Fade ended, that night, I came home and I had this moment to myself and I just was looking down, just, I was really upset. And I looked at the logo and I thought to myself, well, well, what the hell am I gonna do next? And I knew I didn't wanna quit. I was feeling like I needed to go home, but I knew that I just had to keep on going, so I thought right then and there, I'm gonna go with Bytor, and that's gonna be my logo. And again, over the years too, you know, people ask me, well, okay, that's a cool story and all, but why the logo? Well, to me, what the logo means and what the logo represents is it represents equality. It represents community because I truly believe and I know that music really brings people together, especially in a live setting. And this may sound cheesy, but I remember coming across this meme where there are six skeletons and under the skeletons, it had black, white, Chinese, just a bunch of races and ethnicities. And at the end of it, it said, we're all human. Under our skins, we all look the same. And so I really liked that. And that's why I decided to go with this Skull logo as my logo. Because in all, with my music, I want to bring people together with it. I want there to be equality. I want, there, I want to build a community. And so that's really what the Skull logo represents. It's we all look the same under our skin. Well, one of the biggest questions I'm receiving so far about Bytor is, is Bytor a solo project? And Bytor is not a solo project. I do not intend to be going solo. Bytor will be a band, so I'm currently looking for guys. I'm gonna put the band back together, and just go from there. I've seen so many documentaries on bands, and this is nothing new. All my favorite bands, all my favorite musicians, they've gone through this. And so I'm gonna keep on going and I'm gonna put the full band back together. Right now, yes, I'm writing all the music by myself. I'm making videos by myself. It's because I just, I haven't met the right people yet. Clearly, I have not met the right people yet. And so I'm on the search. 
Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, why did I start this docu-series, Becoming Vitor? You know, with part one and part two, I've received such awesome, unexpected feedback from people. You know, all my fans just, just keep on going, just keep on going at this. And you know, it was very unexpected. But one of the main reasons why I did this was over the years, you know, a lot of the fans that I've gained throughout these unfolds of Flickr and Faye, they would ask me, what the hell happened to your fans? Why would you guys get to a certain point and then drop off the face of the earth? And I, it was hard just to send messages. I mean, I was send novels to people and it got annoying after a while, you know, not, not the fact that it was annoying for me to tell those people, but just to, I just wasn't able to tell my full story, you know, there was a lot more than just words, there was visuals, I, I really wanted to dig deep and you know, this is what happened guys, and so it was purely meant to be for those people, hey check this out. And so I mean I had a lot of footage of just these on Fool's Day, Flicker and Fade, and I wanted to put it together to tell the story of, well fans, this is what happened. And so, I mean, that was just the main reason of the documentary and, you know, this is how I became Bytor. This is why I chose the name Bytor. This is what I'm doing with Bytor. This is Stu the Crusader right here. This guy helped the bands that I was in. He managed the bands. He did so many wonderful things. I'm so grateful for this guy right here. I'm going to start crying, so I'm going to try not to. Okay. But this might... guy is the man, seriously, Stu the damn Crusader. No one that I know of would do the stuff that he did and not expect anything from it. He would buy CDs, he would buy shirts, he would buy everything. This guy is the man. Thank you, man. I mean, I, I saw something and I believed in you. Love I still guy. believe in you. Seriously, look. I got your back. I'll support you. I'll, I got you. Let's see if I can muster a bit. You are here. <laughs> I can't even get it out. I can't do it. I can't even get it out with a straight face. <laughs> There it is. Got it. There it is. Love this guy. There it is. Drive safe. We're not done yet. Just because I'm moving doesn't mean we nope. won't. We're not done. It's the digital age. We don't. We have the information superhighway keep us together. What's next? The bottom line is with my music and what I've always wanted to do is spread positivity and happiness in someone's life. Create some sort of positive emotion for somebody. That's my main goal. That's all I want to do. You know, music is so powerful. Music has been such a gift to me. And I know how powerful it is. And you as a listener, you know how music affects you. So I, I, I want to give what has been given to me back to everybody. My goal is to reach millions and millions of people with my music. I mean, the bottom line is I've already accomplished what I've wanted to accomplish. When I was in These Young Fools during 2014 when we came out with the Bird of Bones EP, on Instagram there was this girl from Maine that reached out to us. She listened to our EP and she said, your Brita Bones EP literally saved my life. She sent us a message saying that she was dealing with a lot of suicides in her town. And a way that she got through that was listening to Brittle Bones. I mean, it, it blew my mind that, wow. And she said it literally saved her life. And so hearing that, it's just, it's unbelievable. I've already accomplished what I wanted to do. That is my main goal. I'm doing this to spread positivity, to spread happiness in someone's life. That is my main goal. That's always been the goal. I just want to reach millions of people. I don't care about millions of dollars. I want to reach millions of people. Sure, you know, I want to do this as a full-time career. And so yes, I gotta be realistic, you gotta make money. Yes, you sell merch, yes, you do all that stuff. I think that will come. I think people that really actually listen to my music, they will like it and they will want to support me. I mean, just 
what typically happens to a band, but I'm not searching for that. I'm searching to create positivity and happiness in someone's life. And so that's what's next. With Bytor, it's not a solo project. As I stated, it's not. I want to find a band. I want that team. I want people to come to our shows. I want to create such a beautiful atmosphere at our live shows and just build a community. I mean, that's all I'm searching to do. So that's what's next. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. One thing I know for sure is, you can fight without ever winning. But never ever win without a fight. Endlessly rocking, I'll just keep the faith. And the best is yet to come.